Salve or Salvete. Today's video is going to cover basic types of Roman clothing. This will go over mostly the, the togas, the tunics, and the shoes most commonly worn by Roman citizens. First up, togae et tunicae, the togas and the tunics. The first one that I'm going to cover is the toga praetexta. This is a toga with a purple stripe down the middle. This was worn by Roman senators and children before they came of age. As we will learn in a second, there was a plain white toga worn by the rest of the Roman citizens. So the purple stripe was a distinguishing factor to show that, hey, this is a Roman senator. It was also sort of a status symbol that he belonged to a higher class and he was part of the Senate. This is a picture of a toga praetexta, as you see there, the purple stripe going around the middle. The next toga, as promised, is either called the toga pura or the toga wireless. Either name is acceptable. This is a pure white toga given to Roman citizens. Considering that they were not a Roman senator and considering that they were of age, this is the toga that they would wear. Easy way to remember it is a pure white toga, toga pura. The other name for the toga, toga wireless, means toga of manhood. As the name implies, it was given to boys once they are around 14 or 16 years old to signify manhood. This was a big deal for Roman teenagers as this became a huge ceremony known as Officium Togae Wireless which was celebrated during Liberalia, which was on March 17th. If you want to remember the name Toga Weirless, Weirless, you become a weir, a man, when you put on the toga. The next type of toga is a Toga Condita, which was a bright white toga worn by those running for office, i.e. candidates. Toga Condita for candidates. This is a example of what a toga condita would look like. Once again, right white toga for those running for office. The next type of toga is called the toga pola. This was a black wool toga worn by those going to funerals. I don't really have a good way of remembering this one. The way that I do it is that you pull over a toga when you are going to a funeral. It doesn't really work that well, but I find the ones that work the worst work the best because you remember them the most. But once again, toga pola, black wool toga worn by those going to funerals. There is a toga picta. This is a white toga. I've sometimes seen this dyed in purple, in purple dye, embroidered with golden thread. This was worn by generals when they paraded through the city during a triumph. Way that I remember this is Toga Picta looks good in pictures. Toga Purpura, as the name might suggest, is a purple toga. This was worn by some of the emperors. That's really it. It was a purple toga worn by emperors. Then there was this also, this is the last toga, the Toga Exiuga, which was a dark and quote unquote scanty toga. Once again, this was worn by men. It was, it was just like a little bit more revealing and a little bit smaller than a normal toga pura. This was really popular with some statesmen during the late Republic era. Moving into the tunics, there's the tunica, which is just your basic tunic. As you see there, tunics are a little bit more t-shirt-like, whereas togas, as you saw, were a little bit more were a little bit heavier and more involved with the whole body. It's kind of like wearing a huge coat as opposed to just wearing a t-shirt almost. But of course the toga was a little bit thinner so it wasn't really that heavy but just that same sort of feel. There was the tunica agnus clavia which was worn by those in the equestrian class. It had thin uh, crimson borders more like th thin crimson stripes to show that, to show once again that they belong to a different class, that they belong to a higher class. This is a picture of what a tunica agnus clavia might look like. I might be butchering the name, I apologize. 
Lastly, there's the Tunica Loptic Clavia. This was a tunic worn by senators, and these had thicker crimson borders than the ones worn by their equestrian counterparts. Once again, to signify class, the thicker borders that they were more important, that they were senators belonging to a higher class. Now I get into some of the other sorts of clothes. The different clothes that were worn by women. There was the stola, which was an ankle length dress. This is a picture of what a stola might look like, or drawing rather. There is a pala, which was a shawl that women would wear. A fibula, which was a brooch or a pin. And a zona, which was a girdle. As far as kids' clothes go, there wasn't really much because, as I said before, they would wear the toga praetexta, but what they would wear was a bulla. A bulla was an ambulance that the Romans thought would ward off evil spirits. They thought that the bulla would ward off bad spirits. The bulla was first given to a Roman child during the naming ceremony where the father would place it on the child's chest. And it was dedicated to the household gods, which were the Lares and the Pentates, during the Oficium Togai Weirless, during the manhood, during the ceremony of manhood. They would take it, they would take off the bulla, they would also take some of the shavings off of their first beard, and they would dedicate that to the gods. Finally, we had one last tunic, which I discovered when I was going through some of my old notes that I overlooked. It's known as the Tunica Manicata. This was a long sleeve tunic, and I have a representation of, or a reproduction of what it would look like today. It was long sleeved, and it seemed to be a little bit more artisan, like it was a little bit more embroidered and had some more details into it. This would be a modern reproduction of what the Tunica Mandicata might look like. Now we get into some of the shoes. There is the Solia, mostly seen as sol, uh, Soli. These were just your simple sandals. There's the uh, Calcius, which were ankle high shoes with laces that were typically worn outdoors. There's your Kaliga. These were boots worn by soldiers. Name looks familiar, kind of looks like Caligula, which as we all know was one of the emperors in the Judo-Claudian dynasty. Specifically, Caligula being the third emperor of Rome. Caligula is actually a diminutive of Kaliga, which means little boot. That's where the name comes from. This is a picture of what a uh, what a Kaliga would look like. Next is the Saucus, which was a loosely fitting shoe. Equivalent today would be a low shoe or a slipper. There was your mole, uh, Molius, which was a red shoe worn by patricians. Once again, the red signifying the class of the citizen. And lastly, there was the Carbatana, which was another type of sandals. This one was made of leather, so a little bit more a little bit more durable than just the simple sandal of the solia. These are the different types of clothing that Roman citizens would wear. That is all that I have. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.